<laughs> luxury. Wow. <laughs> What's up, P Nation? It's a brisk morning. We're still here at the campground, and today we're gonna show you what it looks like to travel across New Zealand in a rental car on a budget. <laughs> so, a lot of the time, people think that traveling through New Zealand requires a fancy camper van or going straight up camping, but there's this middle ground that we have found that is actually quite inexpensive and it doesn't blow your budget and it's very convenient because you have your own car and it's not this huge camper van that you have to lug around and it's hard to maneuver. So we're basically sleeping in a storage unit and it's just a box that it has a little roof cover over it and then it has a sliding glass door and that is it. The walls are maybe maybe an inch thick. So you can find this type of accommodation in a holiday park, they call it, because it caters to all different types of people traveling through New Zealand. People like us who are just in a car who need a place to stay, people who are driving their camper vans around or their RVs around, or people just camping who just stroll up, pitch their tent on the ground and call it a night. So you have to account for like New Zealand being a more expensive country to travel in. So our $75 a day travel budget plan that we usually have doesn't necessarily work here in this country. Something like this will cost you about 55 US dollars per night. So let's take a look inside. So now inside, you'll notice that there is nothing too fancy about this. It is literally just beds, pillows, comforters, towels, a seating area, and maybe sometimes a TV. Most of the time there won't be utensils, there won't be a hot water heater, it is literally just a bare space for you to rest for the night. Like we said before, there's nothing fancy to our room, but there is normally a kitchen on the premises and the bathroom and a laundry facility. And you can rent dishes. And it's purely by just renting them. You give them 20 New Zealand dollars and then they give it back to you the next day once they see that you've brought everything back clean. And just like Leah said earlier, most of the things like the kitchen, the bathroom, and the laundry facilities are all in the same place. And they're in different pockets throughout the campground. This happens to be ours. So this is a good example of a kitchen at a holiday park. You'll find that most hostels also have kitchenettes, but sometimes they're kind of dirty. This one is quite clean. It is being used currently, but it just has sinks. It has toasters, it has water percolators. Um, you can rent all of your dishes, so that'll come with pots and pans, and it just gives you heating elements, and most of the time, a refrigerator. So again, no frills, nothing too special, but it is a place to cook your own meals. So laundry. This is an interesting little setup, but you will find that most holiday parks have laundry facilities. Some are $2 per load, some are $3 per load, and some are $4 per load. We've been able to find two and four, and this one is three, so right in the middle. Not too bad of a price, considering that you're probably doing a lot of hiking, and your clothes are getting really, really smelly, and you probably need to wash them. And this is just your regular bathroom. Let's take a look inside. So again, no frills. It is just sinks, it is toilets, and it is a shower facility. There's nothing special. They usually don't give you soap or shampoo or conditioner. You have to bring all of that, but it gets the job done. So here we are. We're showered, we're fresh, we're clean, we're good. And the best part about these parks is that they're all in nature. I have breakfast in the car, I have a granola bar, and Leah often has an apple with peanut butter. But I already ate it. <laughs> so this is the rental car that we got for 18 US dollars a day. We did find it on rentalcars.com, but as you can see, we are practically living out of it. So we put the two back seats down, and we are just using up all of the space. We have our own food, we have all of our luggage, we are ready to see New Zealand. We 
welcome to our $76 Airbnb. So initially, Zach and I thought New Zealand was going to be a very expensive place to visit, but that is not the case. And this is actually a good example of like you getting really high quality for not that much money. So $76, yes, that is a bit on the high end. That's actually one of our entire budgets for the day. When you're traveling in places that are more expensive, you have to budget a little bit more. So $76 a night in an Airbnb gets you an amazing room, so fun, so fancy, and an even better bathroom. Wow. I'm pretty excited about this bathtub. We haven't had a bath in a tub in five months. There are no bathtubs in our bath. And now we have finally made it to where we get some hummus. On average, we spend less than 30 a day at the grocery store, and if we ate out, it would be like at least 50. Yeah, 30 New Zealand. New Zealand. So this is our typical setup. We have bell peppers and tomatoes with our hummus. Sometimes we get broccoli, sometimes we don't. We try to eat vegetables, so we're getting a salad for this one. And we always have the makings for sandwiches. We always have bread, we have a block of cheese, some mayonnaise, and always some kind of meat. In New Zealand, they don't have turkey, so we've been eating a lot of ham. And then our snack essentials are chocolate milk, nothing has changed. And granola bars. Whew. That was a close one. We just stopped in the small town and Leah's about to get gas. I'm getting gas. So the price of gas in New Zealand is double the price of gas in the United States. It's about 217 per liter so that makes it about like $6 per gallon. Now on to attractions in New Zealand. So as you all know, Zach and I love to stick to our budget and thankfully New Zealand is a great country to do that in. So most of the hikes along the road, almost every single one is absolutely free and that is such a big money saver for us. But you can spend money on doing things like going bungee jumping or taking a helicopter ride or going whitewater rafting. I'm sure they have that. Or you could go on a lot of the great walks they have in New Zealand, but that can be really expensive. Some of the huts are like $140 for international hikers. So we saved all of our money and we did all free activities and there are so many to do, especially if you're going out on a road trip in New Zealand, which is the way you really should explore New Zealand. Just take advantage of all of the free hikes and free activities that are on the road along the way. All right, so we have just made it to another holiday park. It's a very similar setup and we've just been upgraded by the manager because they have a very slow night tonight. And let's go check out our new accommodation. Oh, it's like a little apartment. I love it. We have living space. TV, wow. booth, kitchen table, place to cut. Oh my gosh, we have tea. Oh my gosh, we have a bed. No way. We have our own bathroom. This isn't camping. <laughs> this does not count for camping. Oh my it gosh. It's only 75 Kiwi. That is the most lot expensive, the least expensive we have encountered so far. It's probably because we're like off the beaten path a little bit. Pro tip. Yes, we have tea and sugar, a percolator, all these knives, a refrigerator, a microwave, Towels with soap. Normally you don't have soap in places like this. We get soap. <laughs> Luxury, wow. And this is our porch with a view of the field. Because we're on that super budget, here are our sandwiches. They are beautiful. We have ham, we have cheese, we have bread, we have mayonnaise, and we're gonna toast them. So instead of butter or oil, we are using mayonnaise. 
to toast our sandwich. And then this has just been our staple, hummus and fresh vegetables. And so we've been having tomatoes, bell peppers, and broccoli as much as possible. All right, and this is the final. This meal looks amazing. They don't all look this good when we're eating on the road, but hey. the fact that we had our <laughs> own apartment was awesome. It makes the world of difference. <laughs> and we only spent 16 New Zealand dollars on this tonight, along with some products that we already have in our car. So, I don't know, maybe like 20, 23 New Zealand dollars total. It's pretty cheap. So let's recap our daily expenses of traveling by car in New Zealand in US dollars. It's costing us approximately 121 to 154 US dollars per day to be traveling New Zealand by car. So accommodation could cost anywhere between 50 to 76 dollars. A rental car is 18 dollars a day. Things to do is mostly free. You could spend money on doing activities, but we do not. Gasoline is approximately $40 per day. That's kind of a rough estimate. It's hard to tell exactly how much gas we're using up. And food is costing between $13 and $20 because we're buying sandwich material and we're not going out to eat. So there it is. That is our daily cost. All right, thank you so much for watching this video on how expensive is car camping or... I don't even know what to call this. In the middle camping in New Zealand, it can really be a cheap place to go if you do it the right way. It is very accessible, especially if you're on a budget like we are at all times. Getting a camper van can be quite expensive and camping just isn't comfortable. At least we don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a little chilly for us. We tried the first night, we really did, and I didn't sleep until 6 a.m. I just shivered yeah. next to Leah. So this is the perfect balance, I think. It really worked out for us, and it might work out for you, too. Oh.